Good morning, everybody. Um, we're glad to see you here. Uh, we got Brother James bringing the message this morning for the 9 o'clock one. And um, we hope to see y'all December the 6th. Yep. We'll be starting back at the 11 o'clock service in the sanctuary. So we look forward to seeing y'all then and uh, just fellowshipping from a distance, of course. So, uh, yep. So just keep being excited and getting ready to go into the service. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, that sounds weird. There we go.
Thank you, everybody. Hey, they have gone off on their honeymoon adventure. A little, little needed rest, a little time. We wish them well and pray that they have safe travels. Everyone needs a break from time to time. If you don't mind, we'll open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning thanking you for all the gracious and mercy that you show us. Lord, thanking you for this morning to come here to your house and and, and just break bread of life and, and share your word. Lord, we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. As to Christ's name, amen. Good morning. If you have your Bible, will you turn with me to Psalms 25, verse 15. In Psalms 25, David's telling us to, to trust in the Lord and what the Lord has for us. And a good example of that, I guess, I have a friend of mine at work. He, he's a hiker and uh, likes to mountain climb, rock climb, stuff like that. And from what I understand, all the trainers, and all the ones that help these guys learn how to do this, they tell them to start small. But the one thing they tell them to focus on is the peak at the top. They tell them, so don't look back, don't look behind. You look down, you'll get discouraged on the short distance you've made it. You may even get scared and, and want to turn back. But they say, stay focused on the peak. And as Christians, we need to stay focused on Jesus Christ. He's the peak of everything we do. You know, our, our life is that way a lot of times. We, we focus on the past. We look behind. We see things that discourage us. They make us wonder why we keep going on. We, we have things that just won't let us rest but if we turn and we focus on the Lord Jesus he'll give us that rest we uh, we ought to focus on, on what's behind us because what's behind us is no longer there only in memory we can't turn around we can't go get it back we can't do it over it's in the past. And fortunately, if you're a child of God, it's covered under the blood. It's in the past. As me and my brother was talking this morning here on the steps, this is as far as the east end is from the west. He no longer sees it. He no longer recognizes it. He don't see us. The Heavenly Father sees His Son, Jesus Christ, and what He did on Calvary's cross. It's amazing to me, a lot of times I lay down at night to go to sleep and my past come creeping in. That's Satan. Satan's coming to creep in, try to steal and destroy. It says so in God's Word, he'll do it. It shouldn't be no surprise to us. We ought to be prepared for it. But if we call on the name of Jesus, ask Jesus to put Satan behind us, there's a lot of nights I'd never get no rest because my past is dark. A lot of things in my past I'm not proud of. But I had to focus on Christ and what he's done and asked him to put Satan behind me. I find that I rest a whole lot better because I'm relying on him. I'm not relying on me and my goodness. It says in his word, my all that I do is as filthy rags in his nostrils. But I can't praise him and I can focus on him and what he has done for me. And that's what I rely on. We have a tendency to get discouraged. We all do. I'm not immune to it, neither are you. No one is. We all get down and discouraged. I'm so thankful that we have a loving God that we can go to that will lift us back up. 
And this world is not where we need to focus anyway. We need to focus on him and what he has for us when we leave this walk of life. I've seen uh, a few funerals in the past few days. And I have no doubt where they are. They walk in with the Lord today. And they were a great example to me as well as many others. And thank God we still have a lot of great examples here at Central Hatchie still with us. And I appreciate them. I look forward to seeing them. Being around them. They just say iron sharp as iron. And uh, that's no better feeling. I can get charged up just coming to church and being around like-minded folks. I can be down, discouraged. I can get around some of these folks. And if you don't laugh, something's wrong with you. You just, they lift you up. I thank God for that. Over, and I got another verse of Scripture. It's over in James 4, verse 4, verse 14. It says, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is in your li- for what is your life, it is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanishes away. We just we never know. I I, I heard something yesterday at. Miss Doris Bell's funeral that really encouraged me. She knew she was ready. And there was no doubt in Miss Doris's mind where she was going to go. And it just, it encouraged me to hear that. You know, we have to realize that, as I said earlier, we can't go back to the past. We can't change anything. Can't rearrange it, can't fix it. I wish we could. There's a lot of things I'd do over. We can't look forward to tomorrow. We can look forward to tomorrow through Christ, but we can't bank on it because tomorrow's not promised. We like to think it is. We like to believe it is. Tomorrow's not promised for any of us. What we have is today. Today, here, and now is what we have. The Lord says today is the day of salvation. I don't have a long message this morning, but my message is, if you don't know Christ today, let today be today. We're not promised tomorrow. We can't change the past. All we have is what's right here, right now, right in front of us. And without the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no hope. I have a little story. It's short. There's a young man several years ago. He's going to a church in a big city. He had been talking to the preacher and the preacher had been trying to win him to Christ young man come to church one Sunday morning beautiful beautiful summer Sunday morning church was over and the pastor was standing out at the front door and he was shaking hands with the congregation and this young man full of life in his early 20s and the pastor asked him said have you considered again giving your life to Christ Young man said, I'm thinking about it. Said, I'm young. I got my whole life ahead of me. I got plenty of time. He told him, he said, son, said, don't put it off. I'd hate to see you go to hell. Young man laughing, turned around, looked at the pastor, said, preacher, just how far is it to hell? He said, well, son, I don't know. He said, but I wish you'd make make a change. I wish you'd trust Christ. 
The old man turned around, throwed his hands up there to the pastor, said, Pastor, I got plenty of time. Turned around, the church was on a busy road. He turned around to run across the road to his vehicle, run right out in front of another automobile, was killed instantly. After everything it got, he was taken away and everything had kind of calmed down. The pastor went and got a tape measure. Heart burden for the young man. He got a tape measure. He measured from that bottom step where the young man was standing to the point of impact. It was 16 feet to hell. A mere 16 feet for that young man. He didn't have all the time in the world. He, he didn't have a tomorrow. None of us are promised tomorrow. But one thing we do have is the right here and now to accept Jesus Christ. If there's anyone out there today that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I pray that you will make today the day to accept Him. There is no hope. All we have to look forward to is torment and hell if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's, it's my plea that everyone would come to know Jesus Christ. Anyone in the sound of my voice would accept him today. I pray that he puts a burden on your heart so strong you can't resist it. Is your life going to be perfect? Is it going to be health, wealth, prosperity? No. We all struggle. We have storms in our life. You're either going through one, coming out of one, or fixed to go into one. He tells us. He don't promise us no perfect, perfect life. There's one thing about it. If you know him as Lord and Savior, you've got a rock to stand on and lean on. And I pray that today, if you don't know him, that you will come to know him. I'd like to thank everyone for listening to me. My message was short, but I hope there's someone that hears it. And Lord Jesus will touch your life today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you once again for today. Thank you for the words you give me. Lord, I just pray for someone out there that don't know you today. That they'll turn their life around. and Lord, they'll focus on that peak. They'll focus on that high lifted up, Jesus Christ. I pray that you'll touch your heart. Send the Holy Spirit to do a work in them like never before, Lord. Don't let them take that short trip to hell like that other young man. Let them come to know you. Lord, save him from a devil's hell. He's already lost. He knows he's lost. He's just trying to take as many as he can with him, Lord. I pray that you snatch him out of his grasp. Be with us here today. Be with Brother Scott as he brings the 11 o'clock message. Lord, just lift him up. Give him what he stands in need of. Hide him behind the cross, Lord. Let him, let him just fill this place with your word, your love, and your wisdom. I thank you once again for this beautiful day and the words to say I ask Christ's name I believe we have a, a song of invitation seems like all I could see was the struggle
stain that I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. I'm redeemed. All my life I have been called unworthy. Named by the voice of my shame. When I hear you whisper, child, lift up your head. I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet. And I am redeemed. You said me. Celebrating God's mercy and grace through this pandemic, we will have a welcome class on Sunday, December the 6th, after the 11 a.m. service, which we'll hold in the sanctuary. Everyone is invited to stay for the holiday meal. This will not be our usual holiday meal. We will observe a new set of guidelines, and here are some examples. To help everyone stay, stay safe, the entire meal will be provided by the church. We will also have servers in place to avoid multiple touches. The fellowship hall and overflow areas will also be set up to social distance. We will begin to provide more specific details to help you to best determine if and how you plan to attend. Below is some general guideline outline for our plan. Beginning December the 6th, we will continue to have two on-site worship gatherings, our 9 a.m. in the parking lot, followed by our 11 a.m., which will move to the sanctuary. The at 11 a.m. services to you at 10 a.m. Be aware of our parking lot attendants and follow their directions. The ramp door and pull-through doors are the only doors that will be used. We will have only one entrance and one exit door. These doors will be propped open to avoid contact. As you enter, exit the facility, please be mindful of the six-foot distance in front, behind, and beside you. Face mask and hand sanitizer be provided and encouraged. Social distancing guidelines will be followed with two, three seats or rows in between household, and ushers will assist in seating. Once seated, please remain seated. We encourage you to wave or do air high five or fist bump to greet others. Tides and offerings will be collected as you enter and exit the facility. We will not provide bulletins, envelopes, pencil, hymnals, or pew Bibles. We will have on-screen lyrics and scriptures. I encourage you to bring your Bible. Please stay strictly in the fellowship hall, sanctuary, and restrooms once we transition. All other areas are closed until further notice. There will be no small groups or children care, child care until we reach our desired 
destination. We will also take other precautions to ensure health and safety of everyone in attendance, including those at higher risk, and everyone's cooperation will be much appreciated. We will continue with our Sunday signal program. This will help everyone know what your comfort level is. When entering the facility, please select your color choice in regard to social distancing and place it on your clothing. We ask that you are respectful of whatever that individual's choice is. There will be helpful signage up in various locations. At the welcome table, we now have a login sheet. We are asking everyone to voluntarily provide contact information in, co in case of a COVID-19 exposure. We only need information for one person per household. If we have your current information, you can list only your name. If we learn you may have been exposed to COVID-19 during your visit, we will only share this information with the public health officials. They will contact you to explain the risk, answer your questions, and provide resources. We will continue to worship together through our live stream each Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. at centralhatchyfirstbaptist.com. You can also participate in worship with us at Facebook or YouTube or catch our replay once the live stream is completed. We are so appreciative of your prayers and patience throughout this season of change. We have all faced challenges in considering how to wisely navigate this pandemic while also staying true to our mission and calling as a church. It is such a privilege God has given us to be able to shepherd our church family and your support help makes it all more possible. As we move forward, let's strive to do so in the spirit of Philippians 2 by thinking the same way having the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose, and remembering that everyone should, should look not to his own in interest, but rather to the interest of others. We love you and look forward to seeing you soon and gathering together again. Brother Mark and Central Hatchie First Baptist Church Board of Deacons. Thank you. <laughs>